All right. So on that, folks, we're going to get going. We got a lot of stuff to cover here. Um, as you all know, I mean, the chaos has started and it's probably only going to be getting worse. And it, <clears throat> and that is why it is so imperative for people to really pay attention to what's going on. Um, I, I do know. I've said this before. I know there's a lot of people that don't like really watching too much news. I would highly suggest that you try to make sure that whatever you are doing, um, you try to make sure that you are staying focused and you are staying prepared. Um, you want to try and do your best to keep ahead of the game. Now, depending on where you live, in the size of your town, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of chaos that is starting to take place. And one has to ask themselves, is this because of where we're at with the economy? Are people really starting to um, realize they don't have food in the house? They can't uh, pay their rent. They can't pay their mortgage. They can't put gas in their car. Uh, here in Florida, Every morning you turn the news on and somebody was shot and killed overnight or multiple people. Um, we had, there was some dude this past week pulled up to a Wendy's drive through in Orlando and jumped in the window, grabbed the register and ripped it out of there and took off. I mean, I think people are starting to do this crazy stuff and we really have to ask ourselves, are, are we putting... Is this country putting us in this situation? Um, it's getting to the point where a lot of people are even scared to go to the grocery store anymore because of all the chaotic stuff that is taking place throughout this country. The country as a whole is strong. We're Americans and it's strong. But all it takes is a few to start to bring down the many. If you get what I'm saying here, folks, because I have to be careful what I say and how I come across on this platform. We have to sit back and really think about what is taking place. And what is taking place is causing more grief and more pain for us here. We have the government that just issued and is sending more money to Ukraine, a lot of money, billions of dollars, on top of everything we've already given them. And we are sending our oil overseas from here. So one has to ask themselves, how long is it going to be before that comes back to start raising our prices again. We're sending food, supplies, and everything else from this country. A lot of the outlooks for our yield this year on our crops and stuff aren't looking that good. They're not going to be like disastrous. They're going to fall like way below where they should be due to the lack of fertilizer this year, the lack of either rain or too much rain, the droughts, the late planting that a lot of states, they didn't get to plant on time. So all this stuff goes into play on us having a good producing harvest. And that's what we're based on. You have Russia that still will not allow Ukraine to ship out any of their grain. And my thing is, I'd really like to know how long that grain can last in those storage bins, silos, or however they're storing it over there before it goes bad. And then it's just useless. That could be all part of Putin's plan. Now, Putin did come out and say just the other day, as far as he's concerned, 
they're just getting started in the war. And they have been uh, placing reserves on the other side of the Ukraine border, right in Russia, right along the border of all these men. Because they estimate, now nobody knows, but the estimation is about 37 to 38,000 men that Russia has lost. No really idea if that's a true number. No one really knows. And we'll probably never know. The whole war over there is causing havoc on the whole world. It's affecting everybody in Europe. It's affecting everybody all the way to Australia. It's affecting people all the way around the globe. Putin's plan, in my opinion, isn't so much the part of taking over Ukraine. Follow me here. I believe, now this is just me, but I believe that for some strange reason, he's using this war to take control and cause havoc throughout the whole world. And the only thing he's really doing is invading one country that's not a NATO country. So he doesn't have to worry. Now he has to worry about them, you know, countries like us and Europe and Germany and all these giving Ukraine ammunition, guns, tanks, helicopters, drones, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's where he stands with that. His main goal, I believe, is to cause havoc throughout the whole world by restricting oil, wheat, fertilizer, because see, he's controlling these two countries. Even though Ukraine hasn't given in and he doesn't take, he doesn't have total control of Ukraine, he has total control of the water, the Black Sea, where Ukraine has to get their ships through to get their products out to the rest of the world, which he is not allowing. You see, when the chaos really hits home, it's going to start like it is starting right now in this country. People are ready to crack at any given moment. You're to the point where if somebody, you know, cuts you off or something like that, you don't say anything anymore. You probably get shot because people are like a real short fuse on a firecracker. And these are the people you really got to be careful of and watch out for. That's why, you know, if you're going to be going somewhere, you're going to be doing something, it's very important for you to keep your eyes open, keep your eyes out of your phone, keep your eyes open to what is going on around you and what's happening. Because if something bad is about to go down, you want to be able to react as fast as possible. Rather, that means you have to take cover, you have to run, you have to do whatever you got to do to get you and your family out of harm's way. Because these people, they just don't care. And that's a real hard thing for a lot of people, especially in this country, to uh, wrap their heads around. Because a lot of people here, we truly believe that, you know, you want to help out somebody, you want to help people out, you want to try to do the right thing and everything else. And there's people out there that want to take advantage of what you are doing. And they also want to turn around and use you. Um, it's getting to the point where it seems like they're not afraid to take what you got or kill you. And like I said, this isn't all in every little town, you know, because, you know, if you live in a small town out in the middle of, uh, you know, Tennessee, Kentucky, Vermont, Utah, whatever, you probably don't have a lot of this. A lot of this is all starting in these major cities. And you're going to see more and more of it before it gets any better. And the only thing that I really believe per history that will bring this country back together again, and I'll probably get a lot of flack for saying this, but it is true if you know your history is another war. I don't want that. But per history, every time there was a war, the country came back together again as a whole and did whatever they had to do and made whatever we had to make um, so that we could win the war. That's the question. 
the true question is, is how to avoid the chaos, knowing that it's going to get worse, is to be prepared as much as you can. Maybe you're on tight funds. Maybe your 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 money's real tight right now because of the price of everything going up. I mean, rent's going through the roof. Housing payments are going through the roof. If you want to buy a new car, if you have to get a new car, a used car, your interest rates are, are even higher. Your credit cards are probably going to be going up. If you need to take a loan out of the bank to try to cover if your car broke down or whatever, that rate is going to be going up. The price of food is going to be going up even more than it is now, folks. So, folks, on that, all I can do is ask everybody out there to please be prepared. Please keep an open mind and try to stay positive through the coming days, weeks, and months. Because if we don't all try to stick together, if we all don't try to work together to come up with a common ground to survive a bad situation, to have the knowledge to succeed in surviving a bad situation, then it's going to be really bad for a lot of people because there's a lot of people that are in denial. There's a lot of people that walk around with blinders on. There's a lot of people that just don't believe the government would screw them. And they're wrong. You know it and I know it. So I hope for the people that are watching this that hasn't subscribed to this channel, the easiest way to get a lot of great information is just hit the subscribe button. That's all you got to do. And to everybody that has subscribed to this channel, I know a lot of people have told me that they're sharing videos and, you know, all that kind of stuff with their friends and family and hopefully making a difference. Because the only way we can make a difference is to get the word out. Once we get the word out, then it's up to those people to make up their own mind how they want to go about this. Do you want to be prepared or do you not want to be prepared? It's better to be somewhat prepared than not to be prepared at all.